You've all heard about this multiple times using radiation and PCV for low-grade glioma. And again, um, although this seems to be the paradigm now that everybody with high-risk low-grade glioma should get chemotherapy and radiation therapy at the time of initial diagnosis, again, I would caution that we don't have enough information about stratification. This is my own bias. But there's enough information to suggest that we ought to be very careful about um, uh, making this one-size-fits-all, that all patients need to be this way. I would propose that if I had a, 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 a low-grade oligodendroglioma that was triple positive, totally resected, even at my age, I probably wouldn't want treatment. So, I mean, I think we just need to keep those things in mind, at, at that there's still a story to be played out here, but, but this is the big news uh, that came. And finally, about precision medicine. So, so precision medicine um, has been a word that's personalized medicine, precision medicine. Certainly, immunotherapy and vaccines are the ultimate in precision medicine. Um, everybody's getting profiled. There's a lot of uh, desire on the on the on the uh, part of patients to um, to to know what their tumor is on a genomic basis, so that we can select. But it's not clear exactly how to do it. This is a patient who we just. We have a precision medicine trial ongoing right now in, at UCSF for recurrent glioblastoma, and this is a patient that we did three weeks ago. And I would just, I would just tell you that when you, when you get these kinds of representative cases, like I'm just showing you here, I'm not quite sure how to use all the information, but, but we're being asked to. This, this one single recurrent tumor, and this is taken from the core. We also take tumor samples from the infiltrating margins had 61 single nucleotide substitutions, seven structural breakpoints, one gene fusion, three focal gains, 30 focal deletions, one transcript variant, nine overexpressed genes, and 19 underexpressed genes. So if you, if you look at this complicated profile um, in, in, you know, in the way that we're being asked to look, we, we have to then say, well, how do we use the information? Well, we are starting the process, and I, and I think it's important to bring up as a major innovation and uh, important aspect of what we're doing now. Um, we did a, a number of, uh, using the same platform, using a whole exome and RNA-seq to, to look at the various kinds of actionable uh, mutations and alterations that you can see in these kinds of tumors, um, and then um, to try and match those profiles with, with therapeutic agents um, and this is one of our first patients that we did on the trial, and you can see that, that there are a number of uh, actionable mutations that are present that could be treated with drugs that are currently available, not indicated, but currently available. And there are some off-label um, uh, off use of drugs, drugs that are repositioned, um, that also are available at the, in the U.S. Pharmacopeia, for instance, that we could use in these patients, including lithium and propranolol and mebendazole, that there's actually a literature to support the, the use of these drugs. And in the trials that we're doing and some others are doing, um, we're doing these kinds of profiles and we're picking up to four drugs based on the profile, one, two, three, or four drugs, with both positioned and repositioned agents in, in order to um, uh, uh, not fall into the trap of single agents.